So Jack, this is the first time I'm seeing some of these massive boulders, but when I can't get my arms around it, it kind of gives you an idea of how big these rocks are. Every time we're looking for waterfall stones, we're looking for a couple key characteristics. If we can find a rock with a natural high spot on it, and you guys aren't seeing it from there, but there's a high spot here and a natural low spot here. And so when we build waterfalls, we usually do frame rock, frame rock, something in between. When the frame rock is built in to the actual spill area, it's a perfect waterfall. And this massive rock then stood up like this will be such a gorgeous looking waterfall visible all the way from his office over here. And then maybe we just take something big like this and come in next to it. Who knows, but we've got to use this thing as a waterfall stone. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. here like eight months ago, right? Right. And can you believe we're back actually doing it now? It actually feels exactly the same. It was pretty wet, kind of sticky. We were walking through this grove of trees and yeah. the only thing different is you made a giant mess over here. Dude, like we took out, <laughs> these three trees that we took out were a real pain in the neck, but it's all opened up now. It's really looking awesome. I think we, today, since we have a liner issue where we don't have the pond, we're gonna get rocking on this big waterfall. And you were just walking around here and you saw like the massive amount of rocks we had. I think there's a rock over here we can actually start. Oh, it's perfect.
much fun and building big waterfalls isn't that much different than small waterfalls. The concept is really kind of the same, right? You've got your frame rocks, you have your spill stone, you have a frame rock, and then we have these like wing walls that come off. And the big thing that I think both of us look at when we're doing the wing walls or even the frame rocks is that they're not mirror images of each other. What we don't want to do is create field goal posts, right? Like big rock, big rock, and then this big weird vault in here. These should be like at different heights. So if we come up high here, then this is a little bit lower. And then this comes down even lower than that one. And we start creating these different layers. So as we come back in here, this is probably the biggest difference on larger scale jobs. We create these big layers back in here and then we backfill with all this gravel. This does a couple things. One, it adds an enormous amount of stability. So when we're stacking these boulders, there's no way these things are gonna shift and move. They also create like weep holes. So we don't get that water carrying out and causing leaks back that way. Water will find some of these areas and leak out from underneath the stone. So right now we're getting the rest of this gravel in. We're gonna come back in here with probably another rock that slides in behind this guy and then we'll start finishing that wing wall off to the side. Day three, I got Jay Duke. Morning. My boy Jay Duke, he's here and Anthony showed up here yesterday. So now we got some extra manpower. We are gonna get in here and carve out all the finish work on these edges of the pond. There's a lot of roots and stuff that have to be chopped out along the edges. That's what Alf's working on right now. <laughs> hey, <got> a cut. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna be cutting down to four feet deep in a big section over in here. The lines that are marked out here are for a trough. We're gonna be putting a base in for our retaining wall block on this side, as well as the other side right in front of where that whole construction is going on. It's gonna be a patio comes out and cantilevers over that wall. We dig down about a foot. This way, when we get our liner and fabric in, we can actually put a stone base layer in and then the block can get set on top of the stone. Waterfall is looking really great so far. I love the bones of this thing, but we can't go any further until we get the inside of the pond rolling because we want to build out with some large boulders here to kind of finish up these areas. So that's going to be on hold until we can make all this come together. Here's how we do it, super complicated. excavation is looking really good. We put some sand on the shelves where the soil was kind of iffy. Right now what we're using is called rock pad. It is super heavy duty fabric. We want to put that down because there are like little rocks and stuff that are in this soil. And if any of that stuff pops up, this is going to do a great job of protecting our liner. Look at how big this liner is. We had to use the machine to pick it up. There is no way we are going to pick this thing up. We're going to actually get it all open up, get all the protective covering off of it, bring it over to our excavation. I think we're going to put a strap on it and we'll lay it in the hole. And we'll roll it out with the help of one of the excavators. You try. <laughs> <laughs>
which was about a foot deep. Now we got our rock pad liner, another layer of our fabric in there. We are filling it up with this structural clean stone. This is gonna give us a good base where we're gonna be doing our block wall. We are using these manufactured concrete blocks, making a beautiful radius out in front of where these big glass doors are gonna be. The importance of this base is to provide a nice foundation. It's like building a house. You gotta start with foundation. So we get that nice and compacted, build our blocks up, keeps everything nice and level because that water line will show if we're off. So we'll have it nice and level all the way across and it's very nice. So we had plans to do the exact same thing we were gonna do over there, over here, but we ran into a couple obstacles. One, being this giant oak tree and all the tree roots that were gonna go in there. If we wanted to actually set the deck really close to the water level, we would have had to shave out for all the joists for the deck, which would have 100% killed the tree. So instead, we're gonna come in here, just do some natural boulders. I actually like the idea of looking across the pond and seeing some of the custom stonework in here. And then we'll do a crushed stone patio in here, just big enough for like a bench or something. Not this big elaborate deck sitting over here. Ha, ha, ha. 